Hello there everyone, let me just get the camera just a little bit better, better lined up. This is going to be my WWE Fastlane review show and uh, interesting to show. It was uh, mainly heels that one I found. Um, the bar two matches, heels kind of retained or won their match. So let's kick it off right with the pre-show with Miz TV. It was okay, but I didn't like how uh, how WWE treated Miz Dow. Would have liked him to become the, you know like the new Paul Heyman guy, or even just Heyman giving him a card and saying call me sometime, you know, and we'll, you know we'll talk. You know, it would have been nice just for him to get that over the Miz. Uh, the way Heyman was like, is he with you? I just didn't didn't think it was any good. Uh, I just didn't think that it added anything to the to the Roman Reigns, Daniel Bryan, Brock Lesnar feud. Uh, I didn't just didn't like it. I just thought it wasn't needed. I thought it was just probably rushed. Um, so yeah, I kind of was bored with it. Uh, so first match of the night, which was Rowback, Ryback, Dolph Ziggler, Eric Rowan versus the Authority, basically. Authority wins off a knockout punch from Big Show outside the ring, while Dolph, Dolph was punching Kane in the corner. Uh, a solid match, I thought, from all involved. Um, and as I said, the authority win. They start beating on uh, the the Ryback, Dolph, and uh, Eric. And who should return? But <laughs> I would love to be able to speak. But Randy Orton. I, I see that I was that shocked by it that I'm still shocked and I can't talk. <laughs> so Randy Orton uh, came out and he he was basically Oprah. You can have an RKO. You can have an RKO. And you can have an RKO. RKO's to, for everyone. <laughs> you know, the only person who didn't actually get one was uh, Seth Rollins, who did a runner out to the freaking parking lot and then just carried on running, like Dean Ambrose walking through all the snow to get to uh, WWE headquarters a couple of weeks ago. You know, he's probably running all the way to wherever Raw is. So uh, <laughs> it was a good match, but that's one, one. Uh, heel win there so let's see how many more we get Stardust versus Goldust was the next match this was an okay match but I think the finish was botched um, I think Stardust was meant to kick out, kick, to kick out of uh, I can't remember what the uh, role was that uh, Goldust did what the name of it is uh, but I think he was meant to kick out and he didn't and the referee just pulled an audible I guess and just called for the bell Um at, at two, two uh, at, at two count, um, the crowd were not enjoying this match. I, I'm guessing because of what happened after the match, where Goldust, uh, sorry, Stardust attacked Goldust, um, and said that and said to his dad that he was dead or whatever. Um, I, I'm guessing it's going to have a sequel at WrestleMania, which is good. But I don't think they should have had this match. I don't think it was needed, and especially because of the, bot, the what was obviously a botched ending. Um, it was so. It was even, uh, even when I was uh, reading Bleach Report on their live coverage of Fastlane, they said that it could have been botched as well. So I, I think that if it was botched, the match shouldn't have happened. And I hope it's a better match that they get at WrestleMania if it does happen. Um, but Goldust won that one, so now we're one-one. You know, Goldust managed to pull it back for the faces, but heels won. So. Usos versus Kid and Cesaro for the tag belts. Um, just let me have a quick set. Kid and Cesaro managed to pick up the win here and become the new tag team champs. I thought the match was the best of the night so far, which, as a, which uh, going off what we've seen before, not saying much. Um, but it was a good match, and I suspect a rematch at WrestleMania, as you know, champions often do. I'm hoping not. I'm hoping we see... Um, I don't know um, who could who could really go for the tag belts. It might have to be the Usos. I don't see any other. Per I mean, maybe the Ascension could do a face turn and. Go, uh, I mean, let's face it. The, the Ascension as heels hasn't really worked, so uh, maybe they do a face turn and come after Kid and that. Maybe, uh, but other than that, I don't know. I don't know who it could be. Uh, so. That's 2-1 now for the heels uh, against the face. It was kind of the night for heels. You'll, you'll see what I mean. We then had a Sting versus Triple H confrontation. Uh, Triple H comes out wearing T-shirt, leather jacket, hands taped. 
he means business. Uh, Triple H attacks Sting after a load of words that Triple H said. I'm not going to break it down for you. You can probably find it on YouTube. There's probably a video you can watch on it. Uh, he, Triple H, you know, attacks Sting, knocks him down, climbs out of the ring, p- pulls out a sledgehammer, you know, Triple H's uh, trademark, climbs back in the ring, goes to hit uh, Sting with it, but Sting pulls a bat out and backs Triple H into a corner with the bat like right under Triple H's uh, neck. Triple H throws the sledgehammer out of the ring. Um, Sting takes a step back and uses the bat and points at the WrestleMania sign. He doesn't say a word at all. Um, well, not with the mic anyway. He did say at one point, um, see you at Mania or something like that as he was coming out. But you know, he pointed it at, at the uh, sign. Triple H realised what he was after and was like, you want to fight me? You know, and eventually agreed. Um, and then Sting leaves without saying a word on, uh, a word on Mike, as I say. Uh, so it looks like Triple H versus Sting at Mania is a pretty solid lock. And that was confirmed later on in the pay-per-view where they said, yes, indeed, it's going to happen. Triple H versus Sting at Mania 31, gonna happen in five weeks' time, guaranteed. So then we've got the Divas match then, Paige versus Nikki for the Divas belt. I really, really hope um, that... I was really hoping that Paige would win this, purely because I'm not a big fan of the Bellas, um, and maybe also because of what Brie Bella said. I'm, I'm, I was... Ho- I was not hoping for it, but I was thinking maybe WWE would punish the Bella brand for what, um, for what, uh, I've just got, just accidentally spat on my, 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 my video camera there. Anyway, as I was saying, um, I was hoping that they were going to punish the Bella brand for what Brie said about NXT and that if she was at NXT, she wouldn't want to be called up to the main roster now, uh, cause Divas at NXT get more time in matches, um, and not three minutes. Um, but yeah, I was wrong on that. WWE decided not to punish her, it seems, uh, or punish Nikki for what Bel- uh, Brie said, uh, and Nikki retained. Again, this is a night for heels. We now have what three matches to one uh, for the heels. Uh, I was hoping Paige would get another sh- chance at Mania. Who, who knows? We may not have that. Charlotte might get moved up to the main roster. Um, who knows? Nikki used the tights to win, so that might get Paige another match as well. Uh, next match is Dean Ambrose versus Bad News Barrett for the IC <laughs> IC belt. This was kind of a draw, I'm going to say. Uh, Bad News Barrett retains, but Ambrose walks away after beating Bad News Barrett up with BNB's title. You know, he just walks away with the belt. Um, BNB uh, Bad News Barrett is still IC champion, so the heel win night continues, as I was saying, with just one face winning tonight, i.e. Goldust. Weird music then hits after this match and druids walk out and so everyone's like, oh, oh, wait, who uses druids when coming back? Oh, oh is this going to be an Undertaker return? Um, you know, and eventually the Undertaker's music kicks in and the crowd is just like stunned and is, you could, you could feel, even through WWE Network, you could feel the tension in the, in the, in the arena. You know, everyone's just like, is this Undertaker? Because they then, the druids start pu- pushing down a casket I knew it wasn't The Undertaker the minute I saw the casket. Uh, the Undertaker's a tall person, whereas the person who he's supposedly meant to be facing at WrestleMania, Bray Wyatt, is quite small, uh, and the coffin matched the size for B- Bray Wyatt. Uh, so I kind of knew that it wasn't The Undertaker. Uh, just from the size of the coffin, I was like, yeah, that's going to be Bray Wyatt. And sure enough, the coffin opens up, and Bray Wyatt was led inside it. He cuts a promo um, saying that The Undertaker's weak now and he's coming for him, yada, yada, yada. Uh, so I'm hoping that this now, now that they've actually named... Because in the promos before, everyone knew, everyone understood that Bray was talking to The Undertaker, but it was never confirmed. It was ne- There was no Undertaker name given by Bray. But in this promo... He mentions The Undertaker by name. There is no way that they're just going to switch him out for someone else now, which is was always possible from the previous promos that he could be meaning someone else. Now he's mentioned The Undertaker, though. It's a lock-on. Does this mean that now The Undertaker is definitely going to be at, at WrestleMania? Who knows? 
but I think the chances are very likely now that we will see The Undertaker. And <coughs> that dream match, sadly, of Undertaker versus Sting probably isn't going to happen. I understand why the two old wrestlers, they kind of need the younger guys, Triple H, Bray Wyatt, to carry the matches. And if there's two old guys in the ring, it probably wouldn't work as well. So I kind of understand why it's not going to happen, but it's a dream match nonetheless. And unfortunately, at the moment for WrestleMania 31, it's going to have to stay in dreamland. Um, but brilliant, solid uh, promo by Wyatt. I'm looking really forward to that match, if it happens. And then comes the match that I was really intrigued with. This was probably the match that I was really, really nervously looking forward to. John Cena versus Rusev for the US belt. Now, it's unusual for me to actually be rooting for for the heel, but I was. I wanted Rusev to win this. Not because I like Rusev. Not, that is not the case at all. I do not like Rusev. But, and I don't mind Cena having the US belt. I, I, could, I could not give a shit about the US belt uh, or who holds it. Uh, but I did want Rusev to win this for one simple fact. Cena does not need the win over Rusev. Um, Rusev's on a really big streak now, uh, undefeated in like a year, coming up to a year or something like that. And Cena did not need to to take that win. He didn't need to break the streak. Uh, you know, it's not as good as the Undertaker's streak, but it's a streak nonetheless. And I don't see, I, I could not see before the match, and I still can't see after why they would let Cena beat the streak. Um, obviously, as I say, I'm referring to Rusev's streak, not the Undertaker's streak, obviously, because that's already broken. And I'm so glad that Cena didn't win. The way he won, however, I've got... Uh, the way Rusev retained, I've got a question. I, I would have I would have preferred a clean win, but obviously Rusev versus Cena, whatever, it is what it is. Uh, Rusev wins by submission, though it was a dirty finish, as I say. Lana goes to get into the ring. Ref was busy dealing with her, trying to get her out of the ring. When Rusev kicks Cena in the um, in the crown jewels, in the uh, plums, in the in the balls, you know. <laughs> I was trying to beat around the bush there, um, but you know, as I say, Rusev kicks Cena in the nuts. Rusev quickly puts Cena back in the accolade, and Cena passes out. Does not tap out, but passes out. Heel wins again, brilliant match all the same, but I'm getting bored of seeing wrestlers just pass out from the accolade. Um, you know, Sheamus did it, uh, I think Jack Swagger did it as well, now Cena's done it. Uh, I, th I think it was a bit of a, you know, really, is this happening? Are you really getting him to pass out again? Hence why I would have preferred a clean finish for Rusev to dominate. Uh, Cena, because there's now all the chance that Cena's going to come on Raw tonight and say, I want another match with you because you cheated. You know, you kicked me in the nuts. Now we're going to have another match at WrestleMania. I don't want that. I do not want that. I do not want that. I do not want that. Uh, give it, give the, give the, uh, give the loss, first loss to Rusev, to someone who needs it, someone who could sorely need it. It was, it's the same thing as what I thought with the Undertaker Street game beating last year. I didn't think Brock Lesnar needed it, but whatever. Then it's the last match, and I've got to be honest, I wasn't paying attention to this match. Um, I, I saw the end. Uh, I wasn't kind of happy with this match, but then again, it could have just been because I wasn't really paying attention. I might go back and rewatch it, but I'm, I, I don't know. <coughs> <coughs> Brian gets aggressive at the, after he's lost. Because obviously Roman Reigns won. Uh, Brian gets a, gets annoyed or is is angry. Walks up to Reigns, pushes him back, and says, "You better beat him. You better beat him." And I'm hoping now this will quell all the people who are hating on Reigns because Brian isn't in the main event picture. The fact that Brian went up and said that you better beat him is kind of his endorsement, if you like, to Roman Reigns to say, "Right, okay, you beat me, fine, but now fans." cheer for Roman, let's get him to beat Brock Lesnar, you know, um, I'm not there anymore, so, you know, it's all Reigns, support Reigns, um, and I'm hoping that quells the crowd, because if I'm Romania in Brock Lesnar versus Roman Reigns, if that match is a screaming match, or whatever, then if, if, if they're all hating on Roman Reigns and want Daniel Bryan, I'm going to shoot myself in the head. It's 
it's it, I'm I, I, at times like that when the crowd just hates on someone just because their favorite isn't in the match or whatever. I really wish that WWE would just have no crowd in the arena because it really takes away from the match when that happens. And every time, you know, you had it when CM Punk left, you had him chanting CM Punk, CM Punk. When there wasn't, you know, CM Punk wasn't there, he fucked off. He'd, he'd, he'd abandoned the company and fucked off. Whether it was right or wrong for him to fuck off or whatever is down to him to, to decide that. But from the outside looking in, he walked away from the company, he abandoned them. Why the fans were still chanting him fucking nine months after the fact, I don't understand. Um, you know, then you had it with Daniel Bryan when Roman Reigns won. You'll probably have it next year at Royal Rumble when Daniel Bryan doesn't win again uh, and someone else wins. You know, it, it, it's just get over it, guys. Get over it. It's 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 wrestling for fuck's sake. It's not, you know, cheering on a friend at school, you know. Anyway, that's my bloody side rant off. But yeah, it was it was an alright pay per view. I didn't expect much from this pay per view. I thought the card was pretty weak. I think pretty much the Bray Wyatt promo and the Sting promo were probably the best things of the night. Um, so yeah, uh, quite disappointed though that Sheamus didn't return. I was like, come on, we've we they teased the Undertaker return. We had freaking Randy Orton return and be Oprah for the night. Um, will Sheamus return? Mm. I'd have I'd, I'd, I'd tell you what I would have liked I'd have liked Cena to have been beaten on Rusev alright and Rusev almost losing and Sheamus coming out alright beating on John Cena and then delivering uh, white noise or uh, or or a bro kick to um, to Rusev and then for Wrestlemania um, Rusev versus Sheamus for the US belt or even you could have had that for Brian as well after Brian's lost the match after Daniel Bryan lost the match to uh, Reigns Sheamus comes out you know and then beats the living shit out of uh, Daniel Bryan and then that starts his feud that's what I'd have liked to have seen we didn't see it but obviously we've got five weeks before Wrestlemania now um, we've got a good few matches that are either confirmed or um, what's the word? Confirmed or teased, heavily teased. You got Dean Ambrose versus Bad News Barrett again for the IC Championship. You've got um, you've got Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar. You got Sting versus Triple H. You, you, it's heavily teased. Undertaker versus Bray Wyatt. Um, Page versus Nikki Bella is probably a lock on as well. I would slightly hint at the fact that the Usos are probably going to fight. Um, Cesaro and Tyson Kidd again but that could change um, Stardust versus Goldust that's probably another lock on for Wrestlemania so the card is pretty much getting built already for Wrestlemania there's only two matches confirmed uh, Roman Reigns versus Brock Lesnar and um, Sting versus Triple H but the card is pretty much there if you read between the lines uh, and that's pretty much it that's pretty much fast lane. We are now in the fast lane to WrestleMania. We've only got five short weeks. They'll go by with the blink of the eye. Um, so, yeah, that's my first lane review. Let me know what you thought in the comments below. Did you like it? Did you hate it? What would you have liked to have changed? Who would you have liked to win instead of the person who actually did? Do you do you agree with the certain wins that we've seen? Uh, what do you think of The Undertaker tease? Uh, the Sting and Triple H promo? Uh, what do you think? Let us know in the comments. Thanks, and... Bye.